the ACC to protect the student fee referendum process and ensure that the ACC elections are conducted with fairness, integrity, and full disclosure. The lack of transparency in this referendum threatens the very purpose of holding campus-wide elections for student fee referendum and foregoes the democratic power of students to dictate where student-initiated fees should be allocated. This executive order is by no means taking a stance on the referendum itself. This is about the violation of policy and the lack of transparency and disclosure of information to the student body at large. There has been a painful lack of disclosure to students regarding what this fee entails, and my fear is the dangerous precedent that this sets. I acted in the best interest of the ACC and of the student body as a whole in order to ensure that the ACC elections are implemented with integrity and honesty. Basically, we're saying, yes, let's make this bucket of money that just sits there for OP to decide what to do with it, rather than saying, no, this whole process was not valid. This whole process questions the integrity of the ACC and the referendum process. And the integrity of the ACC elections. To, to and therefore, the functionality of the ACC. Right. And it's not about the Daily Cal. It's really not. I really appreciate the Daily Cal as a student newspaper. This is about what this says for everybody else. And it's much bigger than Berkeley. This would, we were told by OP, this would set the precedent for all the UCs. I really think that this issue of the executive order has absolutely nothing to do with if someone likes the Daily Cal or not, if they like voice or not, or if they hate voice. If you, every single argument that you're making right now, both of you actually, sorry, <laughs> um, has to do with a judicial decision. And so you said you have no other route. But filing a charge sheet on those exact same clauses to the Judicial Council, who decides whether or not the fee is unconstitutional, the referendum is unconstitutional, who decides whether or not, it literally explicitly says, only the Judicial Council is allowed to void an election. Um, so on that aspect, it's completely the Judicial Council's authority. Um, I really believe that it is a gross overstep of authority, and it is straight up making the president have the powers of the judicial council. The, the, the policies surrounding the referendum allow for the chancellor and the, the, the president, you know, Mark Udall, to assess the legality of those um, of, the, of the referendum, and that that's the proper avenue. That's why those exist. That's the proper avenue for us to have those discussions, and we were prepared to do that. And it was very clear what the intent was. Well, that UCOP confirmed and approved of our referendum language before we went on the ballot. And so did the Senate, obviously. And that obviously, you know, somewhere along the process, the fact that an MOU is something that needs to be ironed out before the ACC election should have come up, um, not the day of the election. Could you give us an update as far as how far um, into the process you're in? There's no draft. There's no draft. There's so no draft. The, 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 the onus was on the UCOP. <laughs> they, they, they committed to drafting uh, the MOU um, a month ago, if not a month, months ago, and they, 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 never, they never followed through with that. The COP is not exactly the fastest moving body. And we, we waited for that process. We were told that it was coming, and it, it wasn't coming. So it's it just, for us, it's, it's just the process not working time and time again for the initiative. And that's concerning for students who want to pass it for a for a legitimate cause. Um, in terms of addressing the responsibility of, who, of whose it is um, prior to figuring this all out, whether this is even an issue, um, I would say that um, the onus is definitely in, like on part, like in part, um, on the ACC president and Jay president as well. But I also feel like um, the onus is also on you and um, and the people who are responsible for um, this whole initiative. You had to have an MOU beforehand. Like that's not the claim that we're making. The claim is that there isn't an MOU to tell students what the terms would be, and students would have no say in that MOU, and you never disclosed to students that you knew this might be violating policy, and that an MOU might be required. Not once was that mentioned in any of the communication with any students. And if you thought this was going through as a student group, that you never communicated to students that this would mean money would have to go to the ASUC, which requires, or I mean, if we're smart, would require an MOU between the ACC and you still. Uh, this executive order has been issued. That power has been enacted. Perhaps, I mean, I think you can make a good case about the effects on the election. Um, moving forward, are you amenable to what President Obama was talking about in terms of, like, next year, 
working with the ASUC, getting the ASUC, ASUC's political support behind a referendum next year that might have a more positive outcome for your organization? Uh, regarding the substance of the executive order, the executive order does not state that, you know, because we, like this MOU thing, you know, didn't happen beforehand, that's the problem. The problem is that if an MOU is created that compromises the Daily Kyle's independence, this will have misled voters, and therefore it is void. It is not saying it has happened, it has influenced, or it has misled voters. Um, it's saying it could happen, and it could therefore mislead voters, and it therefore should be void. So one problem, uh, there are legitimate concerns, and I completely understand, but this executive order is to some extent operating on an assumption. It is assuming that the UCOP is going to hand us an MOU that will compromise the Daily Kyle's independence. And the fact of the matter is, there hasn't even been a draft of the MOU. Right now, like specu it's complete speculation that this MOU that will compromise the Daily Kyle's independence will occur. I understand that you know people um, brought legitimate concerns, but at this point, it is still an assumption. And you just reiterated the main assumption that you know this isn't going to be a big deal, according to the information you got sent you and that the MOU would not compromise your independence. That's your assumption. Also, an assumption that's been stated tonight, which I, the question I ask is, if this passes, will it be binding? And will that MOU have to go through, or can either party pull out at any point? Because I don't know the answer to that, and I think you're assuming that you can, but I don't know if you cannot. So that's that's a major question I have that I don't know if we should move forward with this if that would end up, you know, if you don't want to go the ASCC route and then you're going to be forced into this MOU process. And not saying that the Daily Cal can create an MOU that upholds as much independence as possible. Students, again, going back to the point the president's made, are going to be voting for a measure and if it passes, they will be approving a big pot of money in which they don't have no control how it's going to be spent. I think that is the biggest we don't know. And someone made a point about elections not being, you know, the purview of the ACC and what goes on the ballot. That's entirely not true. That's the whole reason why things come to the ACC to go be put on a student referendum. If you want to not do that, then it goes through a different process, right? But this came to the ACC. Regardless of the petitions, there were mistakes on the ballot, the ACC put this forward, right? And it put it forward with incomplete and inaccurate information. I think to say an egregious affront to democracy has taken place, it just, I, I would say because of this executive order, I would say an egregious affront to democracy has occurred for this being on the ballot in the first place. So what I'd really like to talk about here today is um, how this executive order has basically, however you want to spin it, has completely altered the election. Um, this vote, this, this ballot was put on the, um, this initiative was put on the ballot by following all of the rules. Allow students to vote on that. Do not invalidate the hard work of all of these students here and all of those thousands of votes that people have already made on the ballot. Let them vote on it. If you want to inform voters, inform them. Please do. Let them, let them see for themselves what the initiative is about. Explain to them all the details about the MOU. But do not invalidate the votes in the election that has already started. Do not invalidate the hard work that all the staff has put in to passing and campaigning for this referendum. We did our due diligence, we talked to the ASPC, we partnered with the UCOP, and under our best knowledge, we did everything we were required to do. And I mean, all I can say is that we value our independence more than anything. And more than, and, and also, we are a student organization. Um, we're in a very unique position by being editorially independent, but we, we're independent for a good reason, but we are also run for the students and by the students. Well, I don't really have a specific opinion on whether or not the executive order is constitutional or not. I haven't had a chance to really review all the bylaws. That said, I do think it was a good faith attempt to represent the fact that there is simply no way that this fee can be implemented <coughs> in a way that is consistent with the UC guidelines. One, one of the UC bylaws that hasn't been brought up much tonight is that 8630, which addresses viewpoint neutrality. If the Daily Cal is allocating campus fees, there is going to have to be a process that ensures that viewpoint neutrality is upheld. Well, the only way you can really do that is by somehow inserting the university into the editorial process of the paper. And the Daily Cal has already said that's not something they're willing to accept. And even if they were willing to accept that, that would clearly violate 
what they told the student body in this referendum. So I think what this is, is it's a good faith effort on the part of the president to say, look, there is simply no way that this fee attempt is constitutional, or not constitutional, is legal under the UC guidelines. The ASUC Constitution, delineating the powers of the Office of the President, explicitly provides that a Senate vote is the only recourse for invalidating the executive order. So Senator Ickowitz is not attempting to usurp the powers of the Judicial Council. That stands in marked contrast to the ASUC President's issuance of an executive order, which exerts an outsized influence on the, on the discourse of the campus community. The severe action, which was unwarranted, has disrupted irrevocably the democratic process surrounding the voice referendum, when in fact an alternative and more appropriate process to pursue the grievances against the voice initiative existed. So please focus your discussion back to the issue really at hand. And regardless of how you feel about the initiative itself, invalidate the executive order. That the UCOP can issue an MOU without student government opinion. The possibility that our legislative, judicial, and executive branches render it Im incompetent after an MOU is issued because they are not involved in the talks after voice possibly passes. That's why President Limbada issued this executive order. The results of the election can be avoided by the Judicial Council, provided proof is given of the legitimate grievances. But can we say the same for the voice? Can we say the same for the MOU, which we did not decide on, which the Judicial Council has no power over, which you as senators have no power over as well? <coughs> And I want to make clear that this executive order wasn't aimed to take a stance on the voice initiative on like whether, like it's to take a stance on something much larger than that. This isn't about just the Daily Cal and this specific incident. It's, it's like having this conversation, this small frame of reference almost trivializes the issue that's really at hand and what I was attempting to address in my executive order. This is a much larger policy issue than that. And I think that's what we need to discuss. And that was why I felt that it was urgent and that it was necessary to the functioning of the ASUC. I'm not comfortable with the fact that after this process is over, like, there's no official student voice in that process. There's no, going to be, there's no guarantee of having a president there. There's no guarantee of there being a student voice. And I understand that the Daily Cal was to be independent. But I think by definition, if you're seeking student money, you are dependent in a certain way now. Like just by definition, the fact that you were self-sustaining for so many years, that was, that's what made you truly independent. But the fact that you're seeking student money, that means you're accountable to students in a greater way now than you were before. Um, when students are voting to support an independent organization, they understand that their money is going to an independent organization. So they understand that their money is not already spoken for. Uh, they understand that they're voting for the organization to allocate the two dollars that they give them however they see fit. Uh, the Daily Cal already said they're going to be publishing a budget and whatnot, but students, if they vote yes on voice, are not saying, I vote yes on voice under the idea that you will now like answer to me. They're voting yes to support the independent Daily Cal. I want to commend uh, the Voice Initiative campaign. Um, they did go through all the hoops. They talked to Jay Council, they talked to our Attorney General, they talked to the Senate, and they talked to the President. Um, they talked to everyone that they should have talked to, so the timing of this executive order is what's putting me in like this awkward position. Um, I'm wondering about the necessity of this executive order and the ideas of urgency. I wonder why it couldn't have been issued after um, the vote had already been completed. Um, I'm wondering if Jake Council couldn't do the same thing. Um, if we could go through Jake Council, file a charge sheet, and I understand that this should have been done a long time ago, which is the main argument for having the executive order done. But now that we know about it, we can still go through the charge sheet menu. We can still bring Jay Council in. Um, today, the discussion was much more about if the fee was correct or not, and if UCOP approval um, was valid, and whether or not that process was done correctly. That, again, is the Judicial Council's decision. I, I really think that, honestly, like, and I'm sorry to the publications, um, that President Lumba made it as if it's the fault of the Daily Cal. I understand that there are a lot of issues and that, that, this approval really, that this approval really was shaky and the process was shaky. But obviously, like from a self-interest perspective, if someone goes to try to get a referendum, how could you expect them to be the ones to give you all the information, to give you the MOUs? That was the Attorney General's fault for not making sure that UCOP approval had been done correctly. We should have looked into that when we voted on it, on whether or not to put it on the ballot. We should have looked into that back then. And even with all those problems, I do think that there would be a strong case of the Judicial Council um, because of the missteps of our organization.
not the missteps of the Daily Cap. I believe that, that, that there has been disrespect done to the entire democratic process, both both on, on the part of the Daily Cal, although I do not believe that it was that, that, that this was intentional. But I think that we should look at the fact that voters were not completely informed in this case whether or not that was your intention, and I do not believe that it was. But we also need to look at the fact that due to this executive order, voters are, were, are making an inherently different vote today than they were yesterday. Those of us in this room right now need to keep in mind the broader implication of this election and, and the fact that whether it was intentional or not, students are voting on something that they were not completely informed on. And I, I do not believe that that is the fault of the Daily Cal, but I do believe that it is the reality of the situation. Regardless of whether, where you fall on you know, this, this executive order, whether you want to uphold it or don't, um, at the end of the day, it's a fact that like, parts of this election have been tainted and we can't avoid that. Um, and so I think a special election really should happen, considering that we can really go about this with all this new information in a much more responsible manner. But this is larger than just the Daily Cal. This is larger than just this small $2 dollar fee imposed on the Daily Cal. It's the precedent that you're setting for student fee referenda on this campus, and for ASUC elections on this campus, and even larger than that, it's for the way in which student fee referenda are interpreted and who has power over them at the UC level for every UC campus. And to, and to allow this to go forward and to just to not think about this larger precedent that you're setting because of this particular issue is, is I really, really think a gross injustice to the students on this campus, to the students in the UC system, and, and you're not doing your due diligence as elected officials of the ASUC. Everyone's fighting against each other because we're saying, okay, let's say, we file a charge seat and we give J Council the opportunity. You know, we have no say in what they're going to say, right? So, like, the only thing I'm saying is this is all confusing. So the only we we're going to need to have to pick one of them. And what I choose is to uphold this executive order so we can do a greater thing and have a special election in order to give Daily Cal a prominent voice on the campus. That's what I'm saying. That's what I want. I think that's the only way that it can happen. There were five town halls on this initiative, on the voice initiative, where the entire publications community, um, Senator Sayra's leadership, and other senators attended as well. Students came out to express their in, their feedback, to get input, etc. At every single one of these five forums, this, this point about the legality of this issue, about this fee, was brought up. Every single one. And none of the senators I was on a part of this body, I think it's a great body, but the Senate failed. Not one senator followed up on that issue, and the judicial branch failed as well. The Attorney General signed off on this ballot language, okay? When you have two branches of our government fail, especially when the point was brought up five times, there's one more branch. This is a system of checks and balances, and whether or not we agree that the executive order was the proper mechanism, it was the only thing that the executive branch could do to ensure that checks and balances were still happening. Finally, we had at least one branch of our ASUC do their due diligence and do the right thing. Yes, the timing sucks, but where would we be? Would we be having this conversation? Would we be talking about a special election? Would we be talking about charge sheets and should we go to the Judicial Council? Would any of this be happening if the executive order was not issued? Um, because of this, I think that the affront to democracy happened well before the executive order was issued. It wasn't the executive order, it was the fact that government failed um, failed the students here. This is about something much larger. This is about a UCOP policy, the fact that UCOP failed us as well. My job as external affairs vice president is to work with UCOP a lot. And I can tell you that they screw us over a lot. And I think that the fact that this process was so confusing and that no one really knew what to do is case in point that we need to change the rules and we, to, we need to make sure that we're not establishing this precedent. Every other UC school looks to Berkeley. And when no one else is here, we can be elitist. People look to Berkeley, right? And um, <laughs> it's, it's true. I love the UC system, but they look to us. 
And if we're going to establish a precedent for the, for the way in which independent organizations can be financed through student fees, that policy needs to be clear and coherent. There needs to be student input. And what this executive order ensures is that, is that we are fixing the process, that we're, doing, that we're going about this in a transparent way, one that makes sense, and one that makes sense for really generations to come to the campuses as well. Senator Williams. Nay. Senator Yoon. Pass. Second round, Senator Abbasi. Nay. Senator Albright. Nay. Senator Chia. Mayor Palmer. Yes. Um, we're going to 4 to 14 to 2 if this motion fails and the executive order is upheld. Ultimately, I voted to uphold this. Um, the executive order of President Lumba because I feel like, again, this is hitting at the home of, of the functionality of the ASUC and who we are ultimately giving our money to and saying who can have oversight over that. And I think that, that should be us as the ASUC, not UCOP. And that's what um, this initiative would have done had it stayed on chat. And so we have an opportunity now, I feel, in moving forward to still help as the ASUC by, 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 by 10 seconds. Just finish, just finish. Just finish. Um, <laughs> Hopefully, uh, in helping in helping the daily count in doing our due diligence to make sure a special election does happen. Yes, partially daily count's fault as well, but primarily HUC fault in in many aspects. Because if we were to understand all the full procedure and understanding, I, don't, I think that we wouldn't have we wouldn't have this problem first of all. We wouldn't have like, had this executive order during time of the election. Um, this executive order, order is very overstepping, and I think that it's not the best decision. Given the time, the timing is so crucial during the election. I want to commend my senators who upheld the executive order as well as uh, President Lumba um, because uh, J Council interprets ASUC bylaws and constitution, but this executive order is talking about UC-wide policy and I do not think that that is the appropriate body to consider uh, what, we're, what we've been talking about here. So why I voted uh, not to say no is because I don't think that J Council, I mean, the Daily Cal did go through the proper channels, and we never had this discussion along the way in this body. And that was my fault, it was a lot of issues. So I think why I didn't vote yes, however, is because I do think it's a bad precedent for this executive order, and, you know, that, that sucks. <laughs> there is a time for the executive branch to step in and to correct um, a mistake that the other branches uh, do, uh, create, and that is called a veto power, actually. That's not called an executive order uh, when you take away functions from the judicial council. The veto power was fully within uh, President Lula's right, and the right to file a charge sheet is also fully within President Lula's right. I, I want to continue to extend the invitation to the Daily Cal, assuming the Judicial Council doesn't change this vote or doesn't do a different action, but I'd be happy to work with you guys to put a referendum on the proper way next year. Whether that's in the fall or in the spring, there are different ways to do that, but I think it's important for you to have a fair shot at this, and I think it's important for students to have a fair shot of voting on this. I appreciate the fact that you upheld the veto because I feel strongly that this um, sets, sends a very strong message to the COP and to um, campus on the way in which policy should be interpreted and the way in which um, student fee referenda, they should be dealing with student fee referenda um, at our level and when in communication with us. Um, to the Daily Cal, I want to sincerely apologize for the manner in which this happened and the, and the situation that we're in. Like, um, I want to reiterate that this, there was no malintent in this, and that this really is just a much larger issue, and that I wish if there was any other way around this, and that there was a way for there to be a legitimate vote on a legitimate um, ballot, and legitimate ballot language and a legitimate referenda, I would be in support of that. And like Bahar said, for the rest of my time in office, for the rest of the time that I'm here, I want, I also extend the invitation to work with Homer, and to work with Lynn, and to work with anyone else in the Daily Cal, to work on work through this policy and find a way for this to go through in a legitimate way where you're a relationship is established with UCOP and campus that is everyone is comfortable with and then also secondly that that relationship is conveyed to the student body when they <coughs> vote. So it's a truly democratic process. 
Um, and this will still go through Jay Council and they will still move on it. And I think that's very appropriate and fair. <coughs> and the issue of like the interpretation of our own bylaws is an issue. I agree. And I think that's something that should be discussed and should be discussed by Jay Council. But I think that this body here voted to uphold my veto because you agreed with the content of the veto and you agreed with the substance and what the, the policy issues that I'm bringing to light. So thank you for that. Thank you. I just real quick, I just also want to thank uh, Council Lee and the Smallers Publication. So we have, we have a good here and you are know, also part of the Democratic process and bringing in an alternative voice. So just really quickly, I wanted to know you as well. So I know you've been mobilizing a lot of the Smallers Publication. I just want to thank you. Thank you. All right. So this now over. Um, uh, shall we just give this? I think I've given enough. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah.